Hey everybody, welcome back to Podcastage. My name is Bandra and I'm back with another tech test video for you guys, as well as this crazy hat that I bought at a gas station this morning at 5 a.m. because it was freezing cold outside. So I have received countless comments asking me, will adding a phantom power supply to your audio chain improve the audio quality of your cheap microphone like the BM700, BM800, NW1500, any of these microphones? So that's what I'm going to be testing out today. Now we're not going to test out every single microphone using this method because that would be a horribly long video and a horribly boring video. And the way that I know that is because I've already done it and all those things are true. <laughs> So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna plug this BM700 directly into these two audio adapters, the Sabrent USB audio adapter, and then this, which is like a, a Geno USB audio adapter, it's a couple bucks, and this is one of my least favorite audio adapters. And we're just gonna compare them that way. And then once we get those sounds, we're gonna plug the microphone into the phantom power supply, and then plug the phantom power supply into each of these adapters into each of these adapters and see how it sounds. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, this is what the BM700 sounds like plugged directly into the Sabrent USB audio adapter using the XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable and my input gain is set at 7%. Okay, now this is what the BM700 sounds like plugged into the phantom power supply using an XLR to XLR cable and then the phantom power supply is running into the Sabrent USB audio adapter using an XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable. By adding this phantom power supply, I was able to drop my input gain down to about 4%, so just a little under half. Okay, this is what the BM700 sounds like plugged directly into the Geno USB audio adapter, and my gain is set at about 72% in order to get a level similar to the Sabrent USB audio adapter. This is what the BM700 sounds like running into the phantom power supply, and then the phantom power supply is running into the Geno USB audio adapter. By adding this phantom power supply, I was able to decrease my microphone's input gain down to about 35%. Okay guys, now let me go ahead and include a couple clips of each of these microphones. Then I'm also gonna include a couple seconds of silence for each of these scenarios with and without phantom power. Then on the silence clips, I boosted the signal by about 12 decibels in Final Cut Pro so you can really hear the sound and the background noise. This is the Sabrent USB audio adapter without phantom power. This is the Sabrent USB audio adapter using phantom power. This is the Geno USB audio adapter without phantom power. And then the phantom power supply is running into the Geno USB audio adapter. So in conclusion, with the Sabrent USB audio adapter, when we added the phantom power supply, we were able to drop our gain a little bit from 7% to 4%. We also did get a slight boost in audio quality with clearer highs and crisper sound altogether. Although we did hear a slight increase in background noise and I'm not sure what was causing that. With the Geno USB audio adapter, when we added the phantom power, we got a huge improvement of the audio. We were able to drop our input gain from 75% or 72% percent down to 35 percent. There was a huge boost in audio quality, better sound, better highs, better everything all around, a huge improvement over the audio. And by dropping our input gain from 72 to 35 percent, the background noise decreased significantly. So if you have something like the Sabrent USB audio adapter where you're able to set your mic input gain at like 5 percent or 7 percent and you don't have a lot of background noise, I don't think you're really going to benefit from this. I think you're going to be fine with the 5 volt that you get from the USB audio adapter. However, on the other hand, if you have a really cheap USB audio adapter like this guy and your audio sounds like crap, adding this provides a significant improvement over the audio. But in all honesty, I don't think that this is the best solution. I think if you're unhappy with your audio quality using a USB audio adapter like this, your best solution and the best long-term fix would be invest in an actual audio interface that's designed for this. That way you're gonna get phantom power and you're also gonna get decent preamps because whatever is in this is not designed to be a good sounding preamp. This is designed to just get you by. But 
If that is out of your price range, I think this will work just fine for the time being. All right, guys, well, I guess that will do it. If you have any more questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below, and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. But no questions about the hat. This hat is a mystery, and you don't get to know more about it. As per usual, if you're interested in these USB adapters, this phantom power supply, this microphone, any of this stuff, links to all of it in the video description down below. And finally, if you found the video helpful, interesting, or you just thought it was fun, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, please. If you thought the video sucked, give me a big old thumbs down. And if you want more of these videos, which come out at least once a week, go ahead and click subscribe by clicking the logo in the corner. And I will see you all on Tuesday. On Tuesday. I'll see you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye. You know what, I'm gonna put this back on because I kind of like this hat. I think I look pretty cool in it. I feel like I'm the guy from Fargo. Pancakes house! Pancakes house!